One way of considering customer service is to know the difference between the core product itself and the service elements related to the product. Ano nga ba yung difference ng core product sa service elements? The core product concerns the item itself, meaning to say, ano nga ba yung meron sa product or item? Included in core product are the following. First is quality. Ibat-iba ang pagkakaintindi ng mga tao regarding quality. Ibat-iba ang kanilang definition. So it depends upon the person how he or she defines quality. For example, sa isang tao, kung durable na yung product, it speaks of quality na for them. Sa mga ibang tao naman, hindi nila tinitignan yung durability but rather performance. Kung maganda yung performance ng product, para sa kanila, quality na yon. And for others, um, ang kanilang definition ng quality is um, reliability. That means, if they can rely on the product itself, that means quality for them. Aside from the quality, we have also product features. Product features make the product distinct from others. And we also have technology or the technical content of the product. Although these are not included in the list, do not forget that ease of use and style are also parts of the core product. Pag sinabi naman nating service elements, these are otherwise known as product surround. The service elements are not concerned with the item itself, but rather with the service provided by the business. Take note, pag core product, it concerns with the item itself. Pero pag service elements, they are concerned with the service provided by the business. Yung service elements, tinawag siya as product surround kasi ito yung mga service na pumapalibot dun sa product or item mismo. The product surround or the service elements represent the delivery service frequency, the delivery reliability, the single point of contact, and after-sales support. Delivery service frequency relates to the speed of delivery. Mabilis ba yung pag-deliver natin ng product sa customers or matagal? Of course, dapat mabilis. Since kung matagal yung pag-deliver natin ng product sa customers, then we are not providing good customer service to them. Next is delivery reliability. The business must ensure that there is a proper handling of the products during the delivery. Next is the single point of contact. Bakit dapat merong single point of contact? Para malaman ng customers kung available pa yung product na ino order nila. And for the ease of ordering, meaning to say, para mas mabilis yung pag-order ng customers. And the last one is after sales support. Pag sinabi natin after sales support, it is the service provided by the business after selling the products. Sa after sales support, hinihingi yung mga comments, suggestions, and feedback ng customers regarding their products. Aside from that, the concerns of the customers after selling the product or after buying the product are addressed by the business. The marketing departments of many companies recognize that the product surround elements 
are very important in determining the final demand for a product. Very important ang product surround elements kasi kahit na 20% of the cost of the product lang ang kanyang nire-represent, 80% naman ang kanyang impact doon sa product. Meaning to say, ang mas tinitignan ng mga customers ay yung service elements. Ang ibig sabihin nun, kahit na sobrang attractive ng product mo, dapat satisfactory pa rin yung customer service elements. Kasi 80% ang kanyang impact dun sa product. Ngayon, dito na pumapasok yung logistics because logistics plays a crucial role in providing good customer service to the customers. One of the definitions of logistics that I provided is that logistics is the positioning of resource at the right time, in the right place, at the right cost, at the right quality. Actually, pwede pa yung expand para maging seven rights. At ang tawag dun sa seven rights na yan ay seven rights of customer service. At ano-ano yung mga seven rights of customer service? First, right quantity. Second, right cost. Third, right product. Fourth, right customer. Fifth, right time. Sixth, right place. And seventh, right condition. Kung mapapansin ninyo, walang right quality. Kasi pag sinabi natin right quality, Dapat makapag-provide tayo ng good customer service sa ating mga customers. E lahat ng seven rights of customer service ay requisites ng good customer service offering. Meaning to say, para magkaroon ng right quality, dapat meron lahat yung seven rights of customer service. All of these different aspects can be key requisites of a good customer service offering. You should also take note na lahat ng elements na to ay affected ng standard and quality ng logistics operations na kailangan-kailangan para maihatid natin yung product natin sa market. The Components of Customer Service Logistics customer service elements can be divided into three categories. First, pre-transaction elements. Second, transaction elements. And third, post-transaction elements. I will first discuss pre-transaction elements. Pre-transaction elements are customer service factors that arise prior to the actual transaction taking place. Actual transaction means delivery. So pag sinabing pre-transaction elements, ito yung mga elements or factors na nangyayari before the delivery. Pre means before, prior to means before. Examples of pre-transaction elements are as follows. First, Written customer service policy. Second, accessibility of order personnel. Third, single order contact point. Fourth, organizational structure. Fifth, method of ordering. Sixth, order size constraints. And seventh, system flexibility. Transaction elements or the elements directly related to the physical transaction and are those that are most commonly concerned with distribution and logistics. In other words, ito yung mga elements during the delivery or distribution of the products. Ang mga examples nito ay order cycle time, order preparation, inventory availability, Delivery alternatives, delivery time, delivery reliability, delivery of complete order, 
condition of goods, and order status information. The third component of customer service is the post-transaction elements. The post-transaction elements involve those elements that occur after the delivery has taken place. Meaning to say, ito yung mga elements na nangyari or nangyayari pagkatapos ng delivery. Post means after. Examples of post-transaction elements are availability of spares, call-out time, invoicing procedures, invoicing accuracy, product tracing or warranty, returns policy, customer complaints and procedures, and claims procedures. Logistics customer service elements can also be classified by multifunctional dimensions. What is our intention in classifying them by multifunctional dimensions? Our intention here is to assess the different components of customer service across the whole range of company functions to try to enable a seamless service provision. Meron tayong apat na multifunctional dimensions at yung apat na multifunctional dimensions na yon ay time, dependability, communications, and flexibility. The time is usually the order fulfillment cycle time. When we say order fulfillment cycle time, it refers to the time from order placement to the actual delivery of the order. Meaning to say, nung time na nag-order ka, hanggang sa na-deliver na sa'yo yung product na in-order mo. Next is dependability, such as guaranteed fixed delivery times of accurate and damaged orders. Meaning to say, yung promise mo na fixed delivery time should be met at kailangan yung order ng customers should be accurate and undamaged, hindi sira. Third is communications such as the ease of order taking or effective queries response. Meaning to say, para mas mapadali yung pag-order ng mga customers at masagot natin yung mga katanungan ng mga customers. And last, we have flexibility which is the ability to recognize and respond to a customer's changing needs. Two conceptual models of service quality. Service quality is a measure of the extent to which the customer is experiencing the level of service that they are expecting. Meron tayong dalawang conceptual models of service quality at yon ay basic service model at extended service model. The first conceptual model of service quality is the basic service model. Itong basic service model na to ay simple pero effective na conceptual model. Under this basic service model, sinasabi nito, na ang service quality ay yung match between what the customer expects and what the customer experiences. Meaning the same expectation versus reality. Kung nagmamatch yung dalawang yan, there is a service quality. Kung meron mang mismatch, ang tawag doon ay service quality gap. Note that the customer viewpoint here is what the customer perceives or believes to be happening not necessarily what is actually happening in terms of what the supplier is providing or what the supplier thinks they are providing. Ang perceived quality kasi ay palaging judgment yan ng customer. This is another reason why careful measurement of customer service is necessary. So, ang service quality, ang tinitukoy sa service quality ay yung kung ano ang tingin ng customer.
Service quality is equal to perceived performance over desired expectations times 100. The second conceptual model of service quality is the extended service model. Kung yung basic service model is simple, ito namang extended service model ay complicated. This is a complicated approach because it helps to identify and measure the critical elements of service for key customers. The aim of this approach is to identify the various different service gaps that can or might appear throughout the customer service process. Measures are then set up to assess the relative importance of each of these gaps and to monitor them on a regular basis. The boxes here represent the key factors in the process of providing a service to the customers. magi start tayo dun sa pinakababa and that is the management's perception of customers' expectation. This is otherwise known as supplier's perception of customers' expectation. Pwede rin siyang tawagin na supplier's perception of customers' expectation. Dito, pinaperceive ng supplier kung ano nga ba yung ina-expect ng customer sa product or service. After this, the supplier should develop appropriate service quality standards and specifications. And after niyang gumawa ng service quality standards and specifications, kailangan malaman yan ng mga customers. That's why meron tayong external communications to customers. Afterwards, the service is provided by the supplier via the logistics operation. The customer will then have a certain expectation of the service level to be provided and can compare this to the service that he or she perceives is being received. This concept is developed to illustrate the potential areas for service failure. Working backwards, ang main issue dito is yung gap 6. This is the perceived service expected service gap, which is the one between the service that the customer expects and the service that the customer perceives to be provided. For both the customer and the supplier, it is the major aspect of service quality that needs to be measured. Ito yung aspect ng service quality na kailangan nating i-measure. At paano natin yung gagawin? How is this undertaken? Meron tayong iba't ibang types of customer service studies na pwedeng gawin to achieve this. Pwedeng complaint analysis, critical incident studies, customer panels, key client survey, and customer survey or questionnaire. Pero, importante pa rin na kailangan nating malaman yung mga rason kung bakit nagkaroon ng service failure. At yung mga rason na yan ay malalaman natin by measuring the other service gaps that appear in this figure. First is gap 5. This is the actual service, perceived service gap. This is the difference between the service that the supplier is providing and the service that the customer thinks is being received. Nangyayari itong gap na to kasi magkaiba yung paraan ng pag-measure ng service ng supplier at customer. Next is gap 4, the service delivery external communication gap. This is the difference between the actual service that is provided and the promised level of service that was communicated to the customer. Ang gap na to nangyayari because of misunderstanding in communication. 
Next is gap three, the service standard service delivery gap. This is the difference between the actual service that is provided and the planned level of service based on the service specification that has been set. Ang cost ng gap three ay pwedeng inefficiency within the delivery service. Next is gap two, management perception service standard gap. This is the difference between the service specification that is set and the supplier management assessment of customer service requirements. Ano yung reason kung bakit nagkakaroon ng gap 2? Pwedeng inadequate initial operational setup. Next is gap 1, customer expectation management perception gap. This is the difference between the service that the customer expects and the service level that the supplier thinks that the company wants. Nangyayari itong gap na to kung hindi naintindihan ng supplier yung totoong customer requirements or the real customer requirements. Developing a customer service policy. Lahat ng kumpanya nagpo-provide ng products and services sa kanilang customers ay kailangan merong customer service policy. Kailangan nilang gumawa ng customer service policy base sa customer level requirements at lapat meron silang suitable logistics operation to provide that service. The main steps are first, identify the main elements of service and identify suitable market segments. Second is determine the relative significance of each service element. Third is establish company competitiveness at current service levels offered. Fourth is identify distinct service requirements for different market segments. Fifth is develop specific customer service packages. And six, determine monitoring and control procedures. Identify the main elements of service and identify suitable market segments. The first step here is to identify the elements of service that are most highly rated by customers. Ito kasi yung mga service elements na hinahanap ng customers. That's why dapat dito mag-focus yung mga companies. And how can these businesses or companies identify those service elements? The main means of determining these key elements or by market research techniques. Gagawa sila ng market research. A typical approach might be the identification of the main decision maker or buyer of the product, the use of personal interviews to determine the importance of customer service and the different elements within the customer service, and the use of group interviews to determine the same. The importance of this stage is to identify relevant measures of service that are generated by customers themselves at hindi lang basta-basta nagigis or nag -a, a major output from this stage of the study is to enable an appropriate survey questionnaire to be designed. In addition, it is important at this stage to identify the different market segments or customer types that exist. It is highly unlikely that a universal level of customer service will be appropriate for all customers. Most customer populations consist of a range of customers of different size and importance. Part of this preliminary stage is therefore 
to try to identify broad customer categories and to ensure that any questionnaire is designed to enable the different requirements of these different categories to be identified. Meron tayong iba't ibang types of customer service study na pwedeng gamitin. For some companies, pwede silang gumamit ng dalawa or mahigit pa depending on their purposes or needs. First is complaint analysis. Second is critical incident studies. Third is customer panels. Fourth is key client survey. And fifth is customer survey or questionnaire. Ang most common approach for the major element of a study ay yung detailed questionnaire-based customer survey. Pwede itong gawin in a number of different ways, gaya ng telephone, mail or post, face-to-face, -face, or web-based. Survey or questionnaire design is a vital part of the overall process. And when putting together a questionnaire, it is sensible to refer to one of the many books available that address the topic specifically. Let's proceed to the second step, determine the relative significance of each service element. Recognized research techniques can be used within the questionnaire to enable the measurement of the relative importance of the different service components that are identified. Kung meron lang tayong small list of service components, ang gagamitin natin is a simple rating table. Meron tayong alternative technique na pwedeng gamitin and it is called as repertory grid. This method provides a much more sophisticated format for considering and measuring the relative importance of different combinations of service components rather than just scoring them on an individual basis. A particular strength of this approach is that it enables the inclusion of interviewee perceptions without researcher interference or bias. Next step is establish company competitiveness at current service levels offered. After natin ma-identify yung key service components at yung relative importance nito sa customer, Ang next natin gagawin is to measure yung performance ng company for each key component. At magagawa natin to by using, again, questionnaire. The list of key components can be rated by the respondent on perceived performance. This will provide an indication of where the company is both underperforming and overperforming and where it has got it about right. This figure shows that there is a target area for service in which the company should be operating. It will highlight those areas where there is a room for improvement and those areas where too much effort is being spent. There is little benefit in performing extremely well in those areas that are of little consequence to the customer. Identify distinct service requirements for different market segments. 
the needs of different customer types can vary quite substantially. This may be true in terms of product quality, method of ordering, level of service, or any other of the many different service elements that can be identified. Within a total market, it is possible to identify distinct sub-markets or segments. An example of this might be the supply of stationary items. These might be supplied to retailers for sale to the public, to wholesalers for further distribution, or direct to public service bodies or private companies for their own consumption. Each segment of the overall market may require a distinctly different level of service or may react differently to certain deficiencies of service. Once different market segments have been identified, a number of specific customer service policies can be developed, each of which should suit the relevant groups or segments. Let's proceed to the fifth step, develop specific customer service packages. This is the implementation phase and it will depend on the results obtained from the stages that have been described. Alternative packages for the different market segments need to be costed accordingly and the most suitable packages need to be determined. The last step in developing a customer service policy is determine monitoring and control procedures. It is vital to ensure that any service policy that is implemented is also monitored. This requires an effective focus on the measurement of the service provided, involving a systematic and continuous concentration on monitoring and control. In practice, adequate customer service monitoring is quite rare. First, because companies may not have a recognized customer service policy. And second, because companies find it difficult to construct quantifiable standards that are capable of measurement. Ang final point dito is that yung mga companies dapat i-ensure nila na nire-review nila yung mga service measures nila periodically. Businesses change rapidly with new products and new customers appearing continually. That's why kailangan ng regular update ng service measures. Kailangan ng regular update ng service measures natin para ma-discard na natin or maalis na natin yung mga old measures na naging redundant na. At mag-create tayo ng new measures na kung saan relevant siya and necessary. Some large companies carry out regular customer service studies designed to identify such changes in service requirements.